Greetings, brothers and sisters. So um, I saw this was recommended on my um, mobile, you know, my YouTube app on my phone. And you didn't get a chance to listen to it yesterday, but just listen to the beginning. And I can see CNN is going all after Alec Baldwin. Now, you know, this shows you this side of the equation, the left-right paradigm. I mean, the right kind of sucks about this as well, but the left is brutal that they completely turn on each other in a heartbeat, right? Now, Trump turned on his people in a heartbeat. I mean, you could say that about Trump, but they're doing it here because Alec Baldwin was a good soldier for them. He, you know, mocked Alec. He mocked, uh, he mocked Trump on SNL suckily, but for a number of years. And he went after Trump and pushed the liberal agenda on, it, on his Instagram for years, right? And now they've just completely turned on him, just like CNN do. This guy's a real shill. Forget what his name is, um, John Berman. But he's one of the, you know, they're all shills over at CNN, but he takes it to another level. But this is how they go after Alec. Joining me now is Steve Wolf, a special effects coordinator and theatrical firearm safety expert with more than 30 years of experience. And Steve, we want to ask you some very specific questions about the... Well, so, so you're going to crap all over Alex. Let's... <laughs> Well, like, let's establish that, right? They're bringing this guy in because he's an expert and he can dispute Alec, Alec's some um, claims. Gun, but first, I just want your human reaction to Alec Baldwin saying he felt zero guilt for what happened. Uh, not uh, really unconscionable. There were, you know, there was enough blame to go around that Alec certainly knows that he has partial responsibility in this. Uh, if he, he's not the one who brought live ammo on the set, he is the one who pointed the gun at her, and he is the one who pressed the trigger. So the way the guy framed the question was a leading question. And I agree with what they're saying. I mean, Alec, you know, we all do. Like him trying to say he, he's not at all guilty, doesn't feel any guilt, and, and bears no responsibility when he was a producer, star, and the guy who fired the gun. Right? <laughs> like the big three, he at least says... Um, some culpability, culpability for what was going on on the set, the conditions on the set, and he ultimately was holding the gun, right? But for him to come out and say he didn't have any responsibility was, you know, a political and a branding move, right? He didn't want to own up to anything or admit to anything, threw a lot of people under the bus. But you can see they're going after him, right? And again, he's been a good soldier for the liberals. They don't care. They just... You know, they they cannibalize themselves. Uh, and I can't imagine being in that position and not feeling some sense of guilt and remorse. And and his trying to steer the conversation to you know, where did the ammo come from? You know, it's not that's not his job. He, he was asked, you know, what's the actor's job? Well, the actor's not job is not to try to determine what the direction of the investigation is by telling people this is the one thing I want you to focus on. You know, there were many factors, and he was partially responsible. So the gun. And this is one of the big headlines from this. <laughs> this is where they're going to go after him here. Interview. Alec Baldwin made the claim that he never pulled the trigger, that what he did was he pulled the hammer back and then released it. Explain okay, well, to I'll us you expl exactly what happened. Okay, explain that. to me what he's claiming and how. So this is where they're going to screw him over. I saw this already. It's quite brutal plausible that is okay so not plausible on a single action revolver when you pull the hammer back which is an intentional act click 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 so you see the trigger is being you know moved backwards as he pulls the hammer back i've never hold, held a colt 45 so i'm not familiar with this but alex claim was he could pull the hammer back before it clicked, and he, what he did is he pulled it back before it clicked and let it go, and that was enough for the hammer to hit a, you know, an actual bullet that was supposed to be, you know, not on the property, and that bullet came out, a regular slug, and killed the cinematographer. But what this guy's just demonstrated is that he couldn't have pulled it. Watch him do it again here. Which is an intentional act. See, that? that's, so he pulled it back, and... That's not enough if it was released right now to fire the bullet, right? It's, you know, it's just 
like that's the 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 amount you can pull it back before it clicks click click Once again click click now the hammer is set when you pull the hammer back and let go as you can see i'm not holding this you know the hammer doesn't go anywhere when you press the trigger which is i'm going to do it with this finger so you can see what a minute act that is it takes very <laughs> And so they're really, they're giving it to him hard here. Like he has no, I mean, just made him into a complete liar. I'm not sure if that's the same kind of, um, I mean, he said he had, I think he said Colt 45 on set, but I assume it works in the same fashion. And so nobody's buying. I mean, CNN's completely savaging the guy, cannibalizing the guy. Very little to press the trigger there. So option one you know, he pressed the trigger, but it was such a minor press that, that, it, that he wasn't aware that he had, you know, ordered that signal from his brain. Or option B, he's holding the gun with the trigger depressed. Now, on this gun, it doesn't matter which order you go in. You can either cock the gun and you can fire it with the trigger, or you can press the gun, the trigger, and then cock the gun. And if you release it at this point, it falls and the gun fires. So if, as he is cross-drawing, his finger is on the trigger, which he may have interpreted as just resting on the trigger, but with a one millimeter pull, that would be sufficient. Now he pulls the hammer back and then releases it. He doesn't have to press the trigger again if he's already got pressure on it in order for the gun to fire. And I think that's really a, a key point in this, in this matter. To, to you know, the key point is that you guys are at CNN have turned on him. Like, why has CNN turned on Alec? He's been a soldier for their cause, right? But they've just, you know, they're savaging him. I'm sure there's other reports here. This guy's, you know, an out-and-out -out shill, so he didn't do this on his own. Two other possibilities that I have seen raised, and everyone who raises them say almost minuscule chance that, it's, that it could be. Number one... He didn't pull the hammer back to the point it clipped. It clicked. Any possibility of doing that and and discharging a bullet? Uh, no, there the, the there are detents that catch the hammer, you know, at each point in the way. I could let go at any point, and the 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 firing pin never will impact. Uh, and you know, it doesn't matter. He pulled back the hammer, which ultimately is going to lead to firing the gun. And so, if there's a you know live bullet in there. He's pointing at somebody like he could have not pointed it at the woman. That's one option. Couldn't have, he couldn't have pulled the hammer back, or they could have been more. Uh, you know, a, a film that he's producing, they could have better. You know, ha a better handle on the fact that there's live ammo on set. You know, <laughs> where guns are going to be pointed and pulled, triggers are going to be pulled at people who are you know going to get shot right. I mean, all those things were, you know, he was involved in every level of this thing. Uh, a casing. And then the last possibility is, is that somehow the gun itself was flawed so that the mechanism that would cause it to click, as you have really very, very clearly pointed out to us, somehow didn't work. There was no click there and that somehow there was nothing to prevent the hammer from going in. Any possibility of that? Only an investigation that examines the interior parts of the gun could reveal that. But unlike, and even if he did do that, he should have known that. He should have known that the hammer wasn't. You know, it just. I mean, Alec is screwed. I don't know if he's going to jail, but they're they're going after him here, right? On CNN and other places. Likely, in your experience. Very unlikely. I've never seen it happen. Steve, I want to thank you for for showing us that because that explains exactly what Baldwin was trying to explain last night and how plausible it was. Now, to his separate contention that somehow the bullet ended up there. You point out, you say that doesn't clear him of all wrongdoing in this or any responsibility in this, but it does raise a very, very serious question, which was there was a live round in the gun and somehow the live round got in the gun. Yes, and, and Mr. Baldwin describes how earlier in her, his career he had worked with professional armorers, and he said, you know, they would hand you the gun, they would open the gun, they would show the gun to everyone, they would load the gun in front of everyone and show them what was being put into it. If there were dummy rounds, they would shake it so everyone could hear it. They would hand the gun to the actor. 
if the yeah. actor manipulated the gun at all, the professional armor would come over and say, stop, I need to check that, I need to see what you did, please don't do that again, right? And, and he said he made sure that the actor was not the last line of defense in protecting the crew. Well, this was not done on this set. Miss you know, Gutierrez was not there handing him the gun. She was not checking the gun. The gun was handed to him by an assistant director who has no credibility as a firearms expert. So he knew the difference. They're really freaking stick it to him hard because, you know, what Alec said, he had armorers do this in the past. That was part of the interview. And they didn't do this on set. They didn't check the gun in front of them. And so no one visibly checked to see if there was any live ammo, which there was. No one checked the gun. No one made sure it was safe. And they didn't. He, and usually they would show the actor, which is what Clooney said when he was, you know, savaging Alex and screwing him over, that they would be checked right in front of everybody so everyone knew. Because if you're going to have a gun pointed at you, in this, you know, a scene where they're pointing the guns at other actors, everyone wanted to make sure, you know, I <laughs> want to make sure I saw there was no, you know, live bullet, especially since what happened to Brandon Lee and other people on the movie set. So, I mean, they're really sticking it to them hard here. Like, this is CNN going in and just, you know, savaging the guy, cannibalizing the guy. It's between what a real armorer does and what was being done on that set. And he never objected to that. Right. He never. So, you know, when CNN turns on you, I mean, Fox News is already, you know, out to get you. So is the New York Post. John Schneider, is that the guy from Dukes of Hazard? Rails against Alec Baldwin for claiming he didn't pull the trigger. Here they get him crying. <laughs> and he said, um,. He said, seriously, Alec, on an 18-minute video, and then he just rips in, says BS, right? And so, um, you know, he went after Alec, and, of course, the New York Post is doing this as well. So, Alec, you know, he may or may not go to jail, but he's done, right? He's, um, you know, like he's he really can't instigool it anymore. He isn't going to be invited back on, like, Saturday Night Live or any of these things. You know, he's just, um, you know, he's over. Like, they've, he's pretty much canceled himself. So another thing, you know, when you're looking at the mainstream media, they always, when they start covering an issue, there's a reason for it. Now, I've been talking about inflation since 2019. I may have been talking about it for longer, but there was clear inflation and economic crisis in 2019. And, you know, then COVID came in and that, you know, took the, I mean, that's the whole, one of the things that COVID did was it distracted people away from the disastrous economic collapse of 2019. I covered this for years. In 2014, I, you know, asked a question to God and other, you know, and then just did some research. When would it be, there'd be a, there's going to be a time sometime in the future because the economy had really collapsed and is insolvent that they won't be able to fudge the numbers anymore. They won't be able to find a way to keep the economy going because it's the the ratio to debt, you know, debt to actual value is so out of whack, two quadrillion dollars of debt. And the answer I got was 2019. And so now the mainstream media is talking about inflation. It's taken all, you know, and they started doing about a month or two ago. As inflation hits harder, middle-class shoppers gravitate to dollar stores. So this is both from MSNBC today. I can't even afford to buy a cart of groceries. Spiraling inflation leaves some grocery workers struggling. The gap between hourly wages, wages and the cost of food means many grocery workers often face a daily experience of being around food they can't afford. And so, um, you know, this is going to continue because of the bailouts and the devaluation of the dollar. And, you know, this is going to, I mean, they want to weaken people, and that's happening with these various, um, you know, biological weapons and what they're calling COVID is being released into the public and then the other stuff that people are taking for it. And so you're going to have a weak, a weak and beat down population, and then we're heading into a depression-like situation. 
So I actually um, continue this on. I made a video with an update on Jesse Smollett and Aaron Carter and Stephanie Rule and the economy and things. And I cover this on my other channel, the Apocalypse Now channel. So um, I'm not going to talk so much more about the economy. I'm not going to repeat that here. So that video is actually just an extension of this video. I made the two together, but I, I uploaded that one first. But anyways, what I want to say here is that they are running the risk of losing power, right? The people I call the controllers, there is a growing concern in their you know, various types of um, projection models are going to tell them, which you know, I know to be true, that their power is over. They can't save their power. And they're going to try desperately because you know, they're immature and they don't know any other way. But the reason all this stuff is happening is because they can't keep things going the same way. The economy is so effed that they have to try something else to keep control. And so they're shifting, you know, into something that, you know, people don't like change, especially when change means their lifestyle isn't as good as it was. So they have to do something, right? And that's what's happening now. They have no choice because the economy and everything else, the morality and all of it can't keep on going the way it's going. You know, we're just falling deeper, deeper into the abyss. And that's why only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely pointing from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.